On today's show, the Cavs and Evan Mobley have agreed to a massive contract extension. How does Evan go out and earn that money? Plus, what does this change about the way the Cavs roster will be constructed in the future? That's all ahead on today's Locked on Cavs. You are Locked on Cavs, your daily Cleveland Cavaliers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Making Locked On Cavs your first listen every day. You can find the show wherever you get your podcasts, Spotify, Apple, anywhere else. Be sure to give the show a five-star review. Leave some nice comments as well. That is how you can help grow the show via podcast. Also, check out Locked On Cavs on YouTube. Just search Locked On Cavs. Watch this video. If you are watching this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you click that notification bell and make sure you are subscribed to the Lockdown Podcast Network so you know when content like this is put up. A proud part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Baseball back in action. WNBA going to get back soon. Olympics coming up. There's so much going on and FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or bonus all summer long. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. I'm Danny Cunningham. You might know me from my time covering the Cavs, places like 92.3 The Fan, Cleveland Magazine, and a number of other stops along the way. I have made it back from Las Vegas. I checked out the Cavs in two summer league games. We'll talk about their summer league as a whole. We will talk plenty about Jalen Tyson too coming up on a future episode. But today is Sunday. News broke yesterday night as I was still trying to recover from quite a day of travel delays getting back from Vegas, as you can imagine. But yesterday, news broke that the Cavs and Evan Mobley had agreed on a five-year contract extension. It's the max. It's a five-year, $224 million deal. I do not believe there's a player option on that fifth year that's not been reported, but I'd be very, very surprised if that was the case. The deal can grow up to be worth I believe it is $269 million if certain escalators are hid, are hit in this deal. Those I don't think have been mentioned, but typically what we see with escalators, it's win defensive player of the year, which Evan Mobley is certainly capable of, make an all NBA team, which I don't know if he's capable of doing that this year. And this has to happen this upcoming season for Mobley to get that, that jump from what is a 25% max, so his deal that he signed or will sign is agreed upon, is worth 25% of the cap moving forward. Again, it doesn't kick in until next season. So the year that's upcoming right now, Mobley will be playing on, I believe it's a little bit over $11 million, and then it'll jump up to that big max contract number. But if he reaches All-NBA, wins Defensive Player of the Year, those are the things that I suspect are written in as his escalators. That, that figure will jump from 25% of the cap, which gets you the $224 million over five years, to 30% of the cap. That extra 5% of the cap every year would ultimately bring that deal to be worth $269 million. So that is certainly something to watch for. Let's talk about how Mobley got here. So he was the third pick in the draft a few years back. And from the start, I think the thing that has been the most valuable to the Cavs with Evan Mobley has obviously been his defense. He is a defensive player of the year caliber type of guy. I really believe he would have been on an all defense team this year had he not missed so much time due to injury. Obviously he missed so many games. He didn't play in enough games to be eligible. You have to play, I believe the number is 65 games. He didn't play 65 games to reach the threshold to receive votes for Defensive Player of the Year, All-NBA, those types of things, All-Defense team. But we know in year number two of Evan Mobley in Cleveland, just his second year after being drafted, he finished third for Defensive Player of the Year. He was a first-team All-Defense defender. So it's very clear he's capable of that, and that is the biggest thing that he has done to prove his worth to the team, to to say this is why he is a max-level player. But I think the question everyone has is, okay, well, is being an elite defender, especially as a big, worth a max contract? And the answer, maybe you could get there at the 25% max, the fun max, as ESPN's Brian Winhurst termed it. Maybe you can get there with that. But ultimately, 
I think that the flashes he has shown offensively are part of this conversation too. Where, yeah, on offense, he's not turned into what everyone thought he would be, as maybe not as quick as we thought he would get there. But there have been flashes, right? It's not as if he's just been a dud on offense. He's still won, been a good player, even if he hasn't turned into a 25-point-per-game scorer. And I think that there are certain situations out there, the way this roster is constructed, has probably held him back a little bit in that aspect too. But that doesn't mean he's not a good offensive player. He just hasn't become great yet. But he's still, I think, been good enough as the team's third or even at times maybe fourth option. But that is one of the things that I do think is part of this conversation. The fact that, yeah, he hasn't developed offensively to where everyone thought he would get to. That doesn't mean he's done developing, right? Evan Mobley, I believe, is 22 years old. I have to go and check his exact age, but I believe he's 22 years old. That doesn't mean you're not done getting better at 22. No one, Darius Garland, not done getting better at his age even. I don't think Donovan Mitchell is done getting better at his age. Guys are continuing to develop, and Evan Mobley is someone that, yeah, okay, so he just turned 23 years old. He's not done getting better. I still think he's going to improve offensively in particular. That is something, but I do think he's done enough offensively as there have been times where he's been a hub, where he can make passes from the elbow. I think he's actually been a really good passer in his time in the league for a guy his size, which is one of the bigger positives. He's solid along the rim. There are things he needs to improve, and we will certainly talk about that. But I do think he's been a good enough offensive player when you pair that with just being an elite level defender, where he is one of the best defensive players in basketball. I don't know how many, if any, defensive player of the years he's going to win, but I think it's fair to say he should be, if healthy, should be a mainstay on all defensive teams. That's sort of, to me, something I look at I looked at at that as his floor defensively. He should, if he plays the the requisite number of games, Evan Mobley should be a second team all defense guy every year. It's a crowded field, but he's that good. I think the offense still has a ways to go. We'll talk about that coming up in a bit. But I think when you pair those two things together, it does, I think, make you worth this type of contract. I think it's very important, provided new information doesn't come out, but I'm... My belief here is that there's no fifth-year option, that this is a five-year fully guaranteed deal. I think it's very important the Cavs did that. I think this is something they've been working towards. Because if you look at past contracts that they've given out, Darius Garland got this same contract after his third year in the league. This past year was his first year playing under. It's a five-year deal, full max, full 25% max, no player option in the fifth year. When they extended Jared Allen, and we will talk about him plenty coming up in today's show. When they extended Jared Allen, he's given a five-year deal, $100 million, $20 million a year, flat, no pay raises, no player option at the end of it. I actually think that's probably the best contract, just value-wise, Kobe Altman's ever given out. Lowry Markinen, I don't have the numbers because they don't matter to the Cavs anymore, but his contract did not have a player option at the end of it. I believe it was a four-year deal. All four years were fully guaranteed. The Cavs had set a precedent here. Now you can come back and say, well, Donovan Mitchell got a player option. And you're right, but Donovan Mitchell is in a different caliber of player. He's a different level of player than anyone else the Cavs have. That's the type of guy that I believe should be getting a player option. Evan Mobley is not there yet. If five years from now, we're talking about another Evan Mobley extension where he gets a player option at the end of it, I think that means Evan Mobley became one of the 10 best players in basketball, which I do think is a possibility. But the Cavs have done a good job setting a precedent here, and I think this is a a way where it paid off. The other thing that I do think is worth talking about as to why Evan got this contract extension, look at a few of the other guys in his draft class. So Evan, I believe, unless I'm missing somebody, becomes the fourth guy in his draft class to sign a max contract extension. You've got Cade Cunningham signed an extension with the Pistons. He was the number one overall pick. He hasn't been, I don't think, as good as everyone, certainly myself, expected him to be. But he's also dealt with a number of injuries, and when he has been on the floor, he's been awesome, right? So he got that max deal. I think the bar might be a little bit lower as a number one overall pick to get that deal because you have to be so invested in that guy. Scotty Barnes in Toronto got a max contract extension. I don't know if I would have given it to him, but he has made an all-star team. And kind of it's what else does Toronto have? 
Franz Wagner, who I believe was the number eight overall pick in that draft by Orlando, he got a max contract too. And the Wagner one, who I I really do believe Evan Mobley is a better basketball player than Franz Wagner. I would rather have Evan Mobley. When Franz got that max extension, I think that solidified that Evan Mobley was going to get it. As soon as Franz and Orlando agreed upon that number, I didn't think there was a world in which Evan Mobley was not going to get the max. Like as soon as that happened, I thought, okay, Evan's going to get a max contract. There might be some haggling over a fifth year option, over some potential escalators that could get it up to the $269 million figure that we've seen, but he's going to get a max. I think all those things, along with how good Evan has been while he's been on the floor for the Cavs, I think all of that combined led us to where we're at today, where he's he has agreed to a deal five years, $224 million, could be up to $269 million. And ultimately, I think this is a win for the Cavs. I do. I think it's a win for the Cavs because Evan Mobley is going to improve in a couple of different areas. What are those areas? Where does he need to improve? We'll talk about that next on today's Locked On Cavs. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. I love sports. You love sports. If you weren't watching sports, you wouldn't be watching me right now. But we all love sports. And sometimes the summer can be thought of as maybe a bit of a down period, right? Summer league is wrapping up. Baseball just had its all-star break. There's no more hockey that you can watch and enjoy. The WNBA going to go on an Olympic break. Well, that doesn't mean the sports just go away. They're still going on. And FanDuel has something for everyone every single day. Day. Every time you want to just dream up some bets, FanDuel is the place to go. This summer, they're hooking up all customers with a boost or bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. We saw the United States men's Olympic basketball team have a bit of a scare. They had a bit of a scare against South Sudan in a friendly, I guess we'll call it, to use maybe a soccer term, in an exhibition match before the games begin. Maybe you're not buying the United States. You don't want them or don't think that they're going to be the team that ultimately wins the Olympic gold medal. Head on over to FanDuel. That's the place to go for all your Olympic action. They've got everything. It's not just basketball. If you want to bet on badminton, if you want to bet on archery, beach volleyball, golf, handball, FanDuel has it all. So check it out, go on over to FanDuel.com and you can start making the most out of your summer as they've got something for everyone every day all summer long with a boost or bonus happening daily. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. So Evan Mobley at this point, we know, has that max contract extension. I think he has done enough to earn it, but that doesn't mean he needs to stop getting better, doesn't need to go out and earn this deal every day. Because when a player is given a max contract, you are, in a lot of cases, paying them for what they've done so far. And Evan Mobley has done a lot of great things so far. But if Evan Mobley is the same exact player he's been for his first three years, for the next six years, is he worth the money he'll be paid? I don't think so. I think he needs to continue to improve. And I think he would tell you that. I think the Cavs would tell you that. That this isn't, Evan Mobley getting this contract isn't, oh, well, this is who he is. He's a finished product. No. No. I think that's far from the case. The things that I think Evan Mobley need to do in order to make this contract worth it. One, this is the most important thing. The Cavs have to continue to be good, right? And Evan Mobley is a big part of that. In his entire career, Evan Mobley has never played in a game that didn't have real stakes to it. Think about that. So most often, when someone like Evan is drafted with the number three overall pick, there are expectations for that player to improve and for that improvement of said third overall player to be the most important part of that franchise's season. That wasn't the case for Evan, and that's never been the case for Evan because think back to that first year. The Cavs won 44 games, and they made the play-in. Every game that Evan Mobley played in, it mattered from a competitive standpoint. There are a lot of franchises, like you can look at Cade Cunningham's career in Detroit, and Cade, I think, is an awesome player. I have a lot of stock, a lot of land on Cade Cunningham Island still. But how many games has he played in his NBA career that the stakes have mattered, that winning and losing had a real effect, that there was real pressure? I think you could argue none. And you could argue every game Evan has played in 
has had a real impact. Because that first year, they made the play-in. Two years back, they were a home court advantage team. This past year, the Cavs won a playoff series. Evan Mobley, every game he's played in matters. That is really rare to be able to say about a guy that is entering his fourth year in the league. That's a very rare thing. You couldn't say it about Darius Garland. The only other guy on the Cavs that you can say this about, at least in terms of all-star caliber players, is Donovan Mitchell. Donovan, from the day one in Utah, the Jazz were good. And a lot of that was because of Donovan. But he's never been in a situation where the games haven't mattered. And you can say the same thing for Evan. That might slow down development for some people because Evan doesn't get the opportunity to go out and certainly make mistakes and have them not matter the way that other high draft picks do. But I do think that it's part of who he's been. And I think that a big reason why the Cavs need to keep winning for this to be worth it is Evan plays winning basketball. And I think that even if the stats don't always show it, he does a lot of things that impact winning, right? He is a, I believe, firmly a winner. Yeah, he hasn't been the scorer that a lot of people, including myself, thought he'd be, but he's been a winner to a level that I didn't know he would be. And, and that's something that's not necessarily able to find on the box score. So that's thing number one. Thing number two, obviously, I think he needs to get better offensively. The scoring needs to improve. I think he be, needs to become more versatile offensively. He needs to be, and this is something I'm very curious to see how this plays with Kenny Atkinson. He needs to be somebody that's going to be taking more outside shots. Last year, he shot 37 or 38% from three, but it was 1.2 attempts per game. That needs to double, if not triple, this year while keeping a percentage, even if it dips a little bit, say it's 35%, it's passable. But he needs to be that that type of guy offensively too. You know, he doesn't have to be the one. He doesn't. Donovan Mitchell's got that covered. I don't even know if he needs to be the two. I think it's more likely and probably the best case scenario that he is the two offensively. But if he's the third best offensive player, but his numbers improve, he's worth it. Because if he if he keeps improving and is still your third guy, that means one, Darius Garland got back to being Darius Garland, took another jump. And the Cavs, to get back to my first point, are going to be playing what? Winning basketball. The other thing, he needs to keep getting stronger. He needs to, and I, I don't want to compare him to Giannis because that's not fair to him. But I want to compare his body to Giannis's body. Go look at what Giannis looks like in his third year in the NBA. And go look at what Giannis looks like physically right now. Does Evan need to get to that level? I don't know. But I think it's clear that he can get bigger and can get stronger. And I think that is something that would really benefit him on both ends of the floor. I think he's a good enough athlete to where he's not gonna he's not gonna lose what he's able to do defensively. He's not gonna lose foot speed. He's still going to be an awesome athlete, but adding some strength, adding a little bit of size, I think would do him really well. I do think that to be the case. I think playing more in transition is another way that he can help to earn this contract because there's a lot of low hanging fruit with him. I really believe that. I think he's somebody that if he keeps if he keeps pushing the tempo, if he keeps pushing the ball up the floor, he can find six to eight points a game in that area pretty easily. And that's a way that he's going to improve. And then the one other thing that I think would really, really make this worth it is if Evan Mobley wins a Defensive Player of the Year award, he's capable of it. I have zero question about that. But it is a really crowded field. You look at Jaron Jackson Jr., who's an awesome defender. He finished, um, I believe or he won the Defensive Player of the Year award the year Evan Mobley finished third. Brooke Lopez finished second that year. Brooke is, I believe, not going to be in contention anymore. But there's a guy in San Antonio, Victor Wembanyama, who he's probably going to win a few of them. Can Evan be a better defender for Victor in a year? Sure, he can be. Injuries happen too. But I think if one time he wins Defensive Player of the Year award and continues to be an elite defender all the other years and is a first or second team all defensive player, I think that 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 makes it okay. This was this deal was worth it. This was a deal that was worth giving him the max. If those things happen, and I I wonder how much Kenny Atkinson is going to be able to get, especially offensively, defensively. You know, I just think he's got a great IQ. He's physically awesome. He's got great hands. He does a lot of stuff really really well. I don't know how much of that's coaching. 
I don't know how much of that is Evan, but I think offensively the, the coaching will really help him to improve. And I, I think if he does that, if he plays better under Kenny Atkinson than he did J.B. Bickerstaff, well, I think the Cavs are going to be in a pretty good spot. I think they'll be pretty happy with where they're at by giving Evan Mobley this contract. But Evan Mobley getting this deal, it might complicate things a little bit elsewhere on the roster. I'm going to talk about what this means from my financial aspect next right here on Locked on Cavs. Passion, drive, and patience, the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. It's clear the Cavs have passion right now, drive to get deals done with their own players, certainly patience to watch Evan Mobley grow. That's their formula too, to try and win championships. And eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. It's where you want to be. I've been talking about getting Evan Mobley to peak performance. eBay Motors is getting you to peak performance. They've got superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. Whether you're in a speed, power, style, all three, eBay Motors has you covered. They've got over 122 million parts. That's so many parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And, and this is important, listen up to this, with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. So there is a salary cap to deal with in the NBA, as you all know. There's a lot going on, and Evan Mobley locking in this deal means a lot for the future of the Cavs. The thing that, first and foremost, it means, and the thing that is most important, Evan Mobley is now locked into Cleveland for the next six years, provided there's no player option at the end of the deal. So he's locked in on a very big contract. Right now, and I'm looking ahead because this deal does not matter for next season. Evan Mobley is still going to be making, I believe his number for next season is $11 million or somewhere along those lines. His number is not all that big. So his 24-25 number is $11.2 million. But this deal goes into effect the year after. And that is when the Cavs are going to get very expensive. If you take a look at what the Cavs are going to look like in the 2025-2026 season, well, it's it's a lot. It's a lot of money. If you take a look at what they're going to look like in the 2026-2027 season, that is when things start to really become difficult as far as the as building goes. So that year in the NBA, the Cavs are going to, as of right now, for 2026-2027, the Cavs have four players that are under guaranteed contracts as of today. Those players, Evan Mobley, Donovan Mitchell, Darius Garland, and Max Struess. Between those players, they've allocated $150.5 million. The cap for that year is projected to be $170.6 million, according to Spotrack. Additionally, in addition to those four guys, Jalen Tyson, who we've seen some really good stuff from out of Summer League, and Craig Porter Jr. both have team options for that year. Those team options are worth a combined $6 million. So that boosts the Cavs up to $156.5 million between six players. Who's a guy that I didn't mention here in doing this? Jarrett Allen. So I think that this deal with Evan Mobley means that in a couple years, Jared Allen is not going to be on the Cavs. It's hard for me to see financially how they can swing it, not just with staying out of the second apron, but right now, Jared Allen is on a very, very manageable contract. I think it's the best contract that Kobe Altman has signed a player to. It's a five-year deal. It was a flat deal worth $100 million. So it was just $20 million every year. As the cap rises, Jared Allen's contract stays flat. That's awesome. If you can do that, that is fantastic cap management. Kobe Altman did that, and I think deserves a ton of credit for it. So 
as of today, Jared Allen's contract has two years and $40 million left on that deal. You could say, okay, let's extend Jared Allen. And I think that'd be awesome. If the Cavs truly want to keep this core group of four guys together, giving Jared Allen a contract extension would be outstanding. Here's where that becomes a problem though. Based on rules in the CBA, players are only allowed to extend for up to 140% of their last deal. So the figure in Jared Allen's last year, and this is because that contract is flat, that figure is $20 million. So what is 140% of $20 million? Well, that'd be $28 million. So that's where his contract could begin. Is Jared Allen better or worse than a $28 million player? I think, certainly last year, he was better than a $28 million player. And as you see the cap continue to rise to the level it's going to rise at, you know, a player that is a $40 million a player now, which I don't know if Jared Allen's there, I would probably peg him as a 32 to $35 million per year guy right now. A player worth that now is not going to be, is going to be worth much more than that two or three years from now. So is Jared Allen and his agency willing to accept a deal that is worth $28 million a year? Maybe. I'd be surprised. I think that ultimately on his side, he could get more than that. And if his goal is to maximize his financial earnings in the NBA, I don't know that that's the right idea. I don't know that signing a contract extension below market value, particularly when you're a role player, is the best thing to do. So I don't know that Jared Allen and his side of things would be willing to talk contract extension. They might, even if they love Cleveland and they want to be in Cleveland for the rest of time, Financially, that is something that it's in their best interest to hit free agency and be able to negotiate a new contract. For that reason, I don't know that the Cavs are going to be able to keep Jared Allen because financially, if you can sign him to an extension at $28 million a year, you do it. You absolutely 100% do it. And for the record, I believe Allen is extension eligible this summer. But you do that. You sign him to an extension because you know he's going to be worth that. And He's still an excellent trade asset in that situation. But I find it tough to believe that Allen's side would want that kind of deal. Because if the most the Cavs can offer him is that $28 million, that's a below market thing for him. So this leads me to ultimately, if I don't believe in the 26-27 season, which Jared Allen is a free agent that summer, if I don't believe he's going to be on the roster once he hits free agency, it might be in the best move for the in the best thought process for the Cavs now to trade him. Because his value, I don't think, on the trade market is ever going to be higher than it is right now. I don't. He's coming off of an awesome year. He's an awesome player. It makes sense if you're not going to be able to re-sign him and sign him to an extension. Now, if the Cavs can sign him to an extension, that changes everything. Changes everything. But if they can't, It's hard for me to see them paying Donovan Mitchell an average of $50 million a year. Darius Garland in that season, in the 26-27 season, he's going to be making $42 million. Evan Mobley, if he doesn't hit the escalators, going to be making just under $42 million. Can you afford to pay Jared Allen $35 million while Donovan's at 50? Darius and Evan are both at 42? I don't think so. Because you have to fill out the rest of the roster and you get up in that second apron real quick. And I don't know if this group is going to be good enough to justify being in the second apron. And that is obviously an issue for the future Cavs. It's not an issue for the Cavs today. But it is something that I do think is worth thinking about as we discuss Evan Mobley's contract extension. It's just something worth thinking about. Thank you again for making Locked on Cavs your first listen every day. Great news that Evan Mobley signed a contract extension. We'll have more thoughts on that. I have a couple of guests lined up for this week. Going to continue talking a little bit of summer league reaction. Jalen Tyson was awesome in Vegas this summer. Going to talk about that. Might actually have six episodes this week. Just kind of unsure 
how things are going to play out. But thank you again for making Locked On Cavs your first listen every day, a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Subscribe, like, share, do all that stuff. Help us grow the channel. Thank you again for making us your first listen every day.